In this video, I'll be working through the question you see on the screen from paper 3-2 from 2024 of the Cambridge A-Level exam. If you're looking for a different question from this paper, check out the description below for a link to a playlist. And if you're looking for a different paper entirely, have a look around on my channel. I'll be doing all this on a whiteboard, hopefully just like you're used to your teacher doing. But remember, we're not in a classroom, we're on YouTube. So take advantage of that. Use the pause, uh, rewind and fast forward uh, buttons. Um, if you find this video or any of my videos useful, I would greatly appreciate liking, subscribing or even sharing. Question nine is a complex numbers question where they give us two, uh, two complex numbers, Z and W, or at least that's what I usually say. I've been recently reminded that this is Zeta and Omega. So I'll try and say that. Uh, for the rest of this one. Uh, be warned, part C and D of this question, I don't like at all. They're, I don't think they phrased it well. I'll show you what they wanted you to do, um, but maybe I'm doing something wrong because I, I don't think they, ex they either explained it badly or I'm doing something badly. So we'll, we'll get there, we'll, we'll deal with that when we get there. For part A, um, they simply want us to, to find uh, zeta omega. Just multiply them together and give your answer in the form of a plus bi. So let's just go ahead and do that. It's only um, yeah, there's only one mark for this, so it's nothing too complicated. It's one minus i multiplied by minus three plus three square root of three i. Um, I like to just get the different parts out of this. Well, you know, forget any of that. We'll just multiply. There's only four parts. Uh, one times minus three is minus three. 1 times uh, 3 square root 3i is 3 square root of 3i. Minus i times minus 3 is plus 3i. Tr uh, and minus i um, times this is minus 3 square root 3i squared. But i squared turns into minus 1, so just changes the sign there. Um, so we have a real part, minus 3 plus 3 square root 3. And we have an imaginary part, uh, 3 plus 3 square root of 3. And that's how you write. The A they're talking about is this, the B they're talking about is this, and there's the I. That's your one mark for part A. For part B, um, oh, before I go, there is other ways to multiply these two, but we're actually going to deal with that in the next part partially, but really in part C and D. So uh, just bear in mind, there are other ways to do this. Uh, and they're much easier to multiply, as we're going to see. Um, but first, we have to do part B, which is turn these guys into um, into polar form, or the, the form they're shown us here, or multiply by e to the power of i theta. Anyway, that's part B. Part B is to write z in the form of uh, or e to the power of i, um, sorry, uh, i theta. So how do we do that? Um, first, instead of putting it in this form, we put it in this form, or at least this is how I think of it. Uh, I put it into the form of or cosine theta plus i sine theta. This, these thetas are the same, these ors are the same. So if I can get it into this form, or basically just find out the ors and the thetas, I'll be finished. Or I should say, you don't really, you don't actually have to draw this at all, but to find or and to find theta, I like to think of a circle and I like to think of these guys when I think of that. So I'll just write out. We're not really writing this at any point. We're just finding or and theta. So we find that by, um, by first thinking of this number here, 1 minus i. Where does that go? It goes 1 minus i. It goes down here somewhere. Uh, but in this form, in polar form, what we're interested, we're not interested in right one down one, we're interested in the length of this, or think of it as a triangle, the length to this point and the angle in here. So that's what we're trying to find. Uh, remember this length was one, this length was one. So this length is just square root two. And this angle in here, well, it's actually easy to see. It's 45 degrees or pi over four, uh, pi over four. It goes down into the minus world though. So it is easy to see that, but we could also get the tangent. Uh, the tangent of 1 over 1, or uh, really the tangent of minus 1 over 1 would give us minus pi over 4. And that's what we really want here. Uh, this is equal to um, square root 2 e 
i minus pi over 4. Because that's it, inverse tangent of minus 1 divided by 1. That's how we find out. Or by drawing it, the inverse tangent of 1 over 1, and then just realizing it's a minus because of where we are. Um, and we do similar enough with omega. Omega, the or for omega is, let's uh, do it here, the or is actually equal. Look, we just did Pythagoras here, 1 squared and minus 1 squared, really. You could think of it as. So the or is actually minus 3 squared uh, plus 3 square root 3 squared all square root. That's all it is, the Pythagoras theorem. Like uh, minus, tr uh, minus 3 would be over here somewhere and plus 3 multiplied by 1 point something would be up here somewhere. So we'd simply get this point up here with a triangle 3 and 3 square root 3. That's where this or is coming from. Um, and that is equal to 9 plus uh, 27, which is square root of 36, which is equal to 6. And then the angle, we're looking for this angle here. Um, but getting the, the tangent, the inverse tangent, will actually give us this angle in here. So just be a little careful about that. Um, uh, we get the inverse... Oh yeah, this we're actually answering part D here, so I don't know... Um, oh no, we're not, sorry, never mind. <laughs> we're, do, we're doing something similar. The inverse tangent of 3, square root of 3, over... 3, the positive number. You could put in the negative, I suppose, but then you'd have to remember to add pi to it. I, I, think, I just like to take it a picture. Um, in here we would get, let me just double check here, pi over 3, that's this angle in here, pi over 3. So the one we're actually looking for, theta is equal to 2, 2 over 3 pi, this, this whole length over here. So um, just to write it down here, omega is equal to 6 is the or part, e, i, and uh, the theta part is 2 over 3 pi. That's how you, that's how you convert uh, any of these into this form. Just find the O and find the angle, and you can think of it in this uh, drawing to get that. Okay, in part C, they want us to put these two points, uh, omega and zeta multiplied by omega, on an argon diagram, um, and then do some things. Let's put it on an argon diagram first. So we have minus three and three square root three. You put this in a calculator, I'm not sure where it comes out. Four and a half or something like that, I'm not sure. Um, so somewhere down here, minus three, four and a half, up here. Or sorry, I need a, a little more room than that. Let's say up here. And then this one here would be minus three plus uh, this. That's a, like, I don't know, somewhere over here, one and a half or so. And then three plus this, that's seven and a half, somewhere up quite high up here. So we get these two points, and they tell us to call these A and B, and here's 0, 0. And yeah, they, t they talk about this forming a triangle. So they're, they're hoping you draw something like uh, that. And they tell us this triangle, or they, they ask us to prove that this triangle is right-angled, um, oh, a, a right-angled isosceles triangle. So from my drawing, maybe this is the right angle, but but we can't be that sure. The better you drew this, the more confident you probably would be. And, and it turns out this is the right angle, by the way. Um, so just uh, keep that in mind. Also, whatever the right angle is, it's an isosceles. So it's the other two that are equal because you can't have two right angles in a triangle, of course. We do know uh, some things already. We know the length from O to A is six because we did that in the previous part. And that could give you a clue that um, we, we knew this is equal to 6 e, uh, what was it? It was i 2 over 3 theta. And this would give us a clue that we could actually just find out this guy's polar form. Um, but that's why I'm a bit annoyed at this question, because that's how I would do this. I'm looking for angles here. So I would use polar form to find angles. But then they seem to imply part d that we should do that. So. It seems they don't really want us to find angles here. So uh, let, let's not find the angles, but we would find, we would quite easily, we could quite easily find uh, the length of this, the or length, which we will find in this part, and the angle. 
um, from here to here. And that could help us do that. So don't worry if you did that way. What I'm gonna do is just stick to uh, these Cartesian coordinates. I found the length of this um, by squaring this, squaring this, getting the square root. We could do the same to find this length, uh, which would just be finding R. Uh, we square this, we square this, and we get the square root of the whole thing. I won't bother writing it all out, but you could go ahead and do it. It would just get out square root of 72. Um, we could also then find the length from here to here. That's a little more interesting. Uh, you can think of it as vectors is one way, um, but really another way is just to think of it as its own little triangle. Let me draw it here. It's only a little triangle. This point is minus three. Um, think of it in coordinate geometry, minus three, three, square root three. So, and this point here is um, minus three plus three square root three and the x part. So this length here is this number minus this number, which actually turns out to be three square root three. Hopefully you followed along there. Um, this point here is minus three plus square root three, about uh, one and a half or something. And this point down here is minus three. The difference between them is this, take away this. So uh, minus minus three is plus three, um, plus three cancels, and we're left with this. And that's this length here. That's all I mean by that. Uh, the other one's a bit easier. Uh, this height here is three square root three. This height here is three square root three plus another three. So this height is just three. So we can, Find out the, the length of this, it's a square root of 36, which is equal to six again. Equal to six, there, we've, already, we've just proven that's an isosceles triangle. And you could just go ahead and say, if this is an isosceles triangle, um, and they've told us, uh, no, we need to prove a right angle still, okay. Um, in that case, the only place the right angle could be is here, but we can prove it by going six squared plus six squared is equal to square root of 72 squared, which is 72. And that proves it's the right angle. So I think that's how they want you to answer that. But really, I, I just think this was a terribly worded question on how to do it. And unfortunately, it doesn't get much better in the next part. I'll, I'll clear this off and leave a bit of room for part D. Okay, part D, they ask you to use part B to prove a this. Now, I think this is the worst worded question I've ever seen in the exam. Um, I know how to get the answer, but I don't really know how to explain what they were trying to say there. Um, I guess what they were hoping you would notice is going back to part B. In part B, we found out that W was equal to this, and we also found out that zeta was equal to, let's see, square root two, um, uh, let me go check e to the power of minus i pi over four. That's what we found out in part two. Um, and what I think they want you to notice is using part two, they want you to notice that this divided by this looks sort of like these two. That's all I can think is what they are thinking. Um, and what I think they want you to do is, we've multiplied zeta by uh, omega already. What if we did it again? This zeta times this omega. So let's do that again. I think this is where they were trying to get you to go when they said by using part B. Zeta times omega is, uh, let's see. Oh, sorry, square root of two first. Uh, square root of two e minus i pi over four multiplied by six e i two over three pi. And then uh, this just means we multiply the number by the number. So that's a uh, six square root two. As we've seen in the previous part, this is the same as a uh, square root of 72. And uh, multiply e by e. They're, they're both the same base. So we can just add, the, add what's above here. So they both have i in it. They both have pi in it. So we're just adding uh, minus pi over four plus uh, two over three pi. That's all we're doing here. And that becomes, uh, let me write that square root of 72, just so you can link it to part C. 
uh, e to the power of i pi. Uh, adding these together, we need a common base. That'd be 12. So we need three more here and three more here. Uh, we need four more up here and four more down there. So that's uh, uh, eight minus three. So that's five over 12. And that's where this five over 12 comes from. So they want you to notice, I think, because uh, again, it's a terribly worded question. They want you to notice that Zeta Omega has a argument, has an angle of five over 12 pi. And how do you find uh, the argument, the angle of uh, something? And that's by getting the arc tan, the, sorry, the inverse tan of, um, of this divided by this, the inverse tan of 3 plus 3 square root of 3 over minus 3 plus 3 square root of 3. And that's equal, we now know, to 5 over 12 pi. And that's what I think they wanted to do for part D, uh, cleaning this up a little bit. Uh, take tan to both sides, and we get on this side, we get tan 5 over 12 pi, just like they want us to prove. And this side, everybody has 3 in it. Divide by 3, we get 1. Divide by 3, we get square root 3 over minus 1 plus uh, 3. And that's, oh, I, I have done the wrong way around, but that's fine. That's what they, I think they wanted you to do. But I don't, I, I expect students to be able to understand what I did. A, an A student, a student that's going for the top grade, to understand what I'm doing. But I honestly don't expect a student, even a top student, to have understand what they meant in that question. So if, if, you, if you were lost in their question, I understand. If you were lost in what I explained, I apologize, <laughs> maybe I should have done better. But uh, ask some questions in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer them. Thanks for watching and have a great day.